What's going on, people? It's Mr. Dove back again. I hope I was fit as well. And yes, another podcast, another talk about Nottingham Forest. And yes, we're back in the Premier League again, people. Um, if you're new to the channel, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and comment below if you've got any questions regarding Forest or anything. Uh, right, we've got the, there we go. We've got the panel. I'll say I've got, I've got the, the legend, Dead Old. How are you doing, Des? I'm good. I, I don't know how I can be classed as a legend with these two. But... No, I don't, yeah, no, yeah. I got, no, I got the wrong person meant to say Swin. You like, how you doing, Swin? <laughs> All right, mate, how are you? I'm not too bad, not too bad. And last but not least, what a legend. Uh, before, before we do the start, I, I want to throw Kevin under the bus because people, you know, Boris beat Arsenal and he's been hiding from me, people. So if people want to say little things about Kev, about the one they'll win, Kev's here now. How you doing, Kev? Hey, listen, I'm buzzing, mate. I'm buzzing. Listen. Forest staying in the league, that'll do me. I said to you, 17th, you done 16th and you left a little spot for Everton to stay up. So, yeah, listen, we all done each other a favour. <laughs> Thank God. But no, I'm, I'm buzzing, mate. I'm buzzing. Still got three teams in the Premier League like last season. So, isn't that fantastic? It's brilliant. And you know what? The fixtures are out. And well, listen, we're going to cover that. We're going to cover that in the show. We're going to cover everything, people. So, like I said, Kevin's going to ask 10 questions for all of us. So, people get involved. Um, what Kevin says, put in the chat so you can play the game. Um, but, listen, if you're new to the channel, please do hit the like button. Subscribe if you're new. Um, so, for Kev, let's get started. Let's What's go. Your let's go, Kev. Right. Let's go. Let, let, let me just get started with, let's cover a little bit of the back end of last season. So, we we done a show... And I think there was, what is it, five or six games to go, Dor? Yeah, yeah. And we'd made our predictions and we're all over the place because <laughs> some went good, some went bad, some went indifferent. But how was the end of season for you with the nerves and everything? I've not spoken to Swin or Des about this. So let me ask Swin first, what were you like at the end of the season with about five or six games to go, Swin, where it started to get a little bit bumpy? Uh, to be honest, mate, um, it was stressful. I completely switched off, you know, from watching these podcasts and, I mean, even uh, Ben's and uh, I listened to that Forza, Gary Bowley, stuff like that. I completely switched off because of the pressure, the tension. Just too much. It, it, was, it was absolutely doing my head in. Complete nightmare. It, it, but, yeah, it is difficult, isn't yeah, it? It yeah. is difficult, really difficult. How, how did you cope, Des? Oh, you know me, Kev. I, I, I can't switch off. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm, I'm all over. Um, I, I tell you what, something, something weird happened with me at the end of the season. I was, I was, I've been sort of feeling that Forest were probably the worst team in the league for most of the season. Um, not, not being negative, just feeling that that they were punching a little bit above the weight when, it's when, new. when they were in a good position, and then. Something happened in that Liverpool game when we went to Anfield and, and and they started to believe that they could score goals. We scored two goals up there and we defended really, really poorly. We conceded three goals that were criminal. You know, I said it at the time. But from that point, I got this wave of confidence. After the Aston Villa game, which was just before that, I was gone. Forrest were gone. We were getting relegated. You know, I, I just couldn't see any way out of it. We'd just been beat by Leeds. We'd just been beat by Villa, who was on the beach. And I just thought that was it. We went to Anfield. We mustered up a bit of a performance. We we conceded a lot of possession. We, we let Liverpool have the ball. And I thought we really competed in that game. And then from that point, we was winning at Brentford. And we threw that, managed to throw that game away. But I, feel, I, I felt like there was some belief then within the team. Danilo started to perform. I think he was he was massive in that end of season winning. And I started to get some real confidence. Before we went to Chelsea, I actually started believing we, we was gonna stay up. Um and, and it was still it was still a bit hairy scary. We played that Southampton game, which again could have gone either way. You know, Southampton come and put on a real good performance. That was the real like nerve wracking one because if we'd have lost that, you'd have felt that it would have been really, really hard to come back. But once we sort of dug that one out, it felt like we were playing teams who was a little bit on the beach, you know, Chelsea. And and we should have won that Chelsea game. We, I, yeah. I, I'm not seen as sort of take the game to the opposition like we did to Chelsea in the first half. 
in any game this season. We won every tackle. We won every header. We cut out all the stupid mistakes because that's what's cost Forest. Stupid mistakes. Second half, we give them we give them the ball twice in midfield. They go up and score two goals. Raheem Sterling, you know. But from there, I just that that last. I didn't think we'd beat Arsenal, but I thought we'd stay up ultimately by getting something at Palace, which we proved to do in the end anyway. But the Arsenal game, you know, was just a fantastic occasion, and and it was just it it's just all that negativity that's gone before. Has been wiped away again, just like it was. Me and you spoke a long, long time ago about the impact Steve Cooper's having in the club, and and he, and we keep having these occasions, these nights, these big, big celebrations, and it always ends well. It always ends well, and that's all that matters, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What about you, Ben? Des mentioned it there. You keep mentioning it. The Arsenal game. What was the tension like? What was what was the game like? <laughs> It was oh, that, the atmosphere was was one of the best. Yeah. That's Forest fan is one of the best atmospheres I've witnessed. Um, that time, like I said, that time, Arsenal they Man City won the league. If you look at it, yeah. and they were thought, oh, okay, Forest going to be more up for this, but I still thought we'll struggle that game because because when when me and Des and Swim we went to. What, um, Emirates and they actually hammered us and um, I thought so far Arsenal going to beat us simple and then we're going to wait to the Palace game but that game against Arsenal is one of the best performances I've witnessed I don't think Arsenal had a chance on, on, on one or two yeah, chances did, I don't think they had a, a I shot think, on goal I don't think I shot on goal as well so to see that performance I thought wow because as I, I, what Des says from I think the game against Brentford I thought it was down I thought we was down after that um, because I didn't see that. I didn't see that come in. But then the Southampton, then we played Chelsea, and then Arsenal. The, 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 that the one that as a forest from people in the chat as well. That that was the best, best atmosphere. And if we can have that momentum from next season, Kev, I'm not going to give. I don't be um, be confident saying we're going to get top ten. Blah blah. We can get mid table. And progress because that is what, like I said, there's team spirit from that. We can mention Dealele as well. Since he's coming to the club, it's been it's, it's just been amazing. So yeah, it's been a fantastic. I'm happy. I don't know. I'm, I'm so happy, Kev. Just just to say that we're in the Premier League next season because we've had ups and downs. But again, Go on, Des. Well, well, what I'll say, do you know, when you look back at the season and, and every team has their injuries and every team has their, their bad luck and, and things like that, but things seem to happen to Forrest that nobody had any control over. Do you know, Mitrovic got sent off at Old Trafford and, and, and William, and then the next three games was against relegation rivals. You know, Forrest had two players injured in the same move at Fulham, and they just... And, and I don't, I, I don't like this sort of negative talk in terms of oh this happened, that happened, that happened. But there was so much that happened. Tyro Wawonyi proved to be massive at the end of the season, and we lost him every time he hit form. We lost him. Nico Williams underperformed for much of the season. When he when he started performing, his own teammate kicked him in the face. You know, his best mate kicked him in the face. <laughs> By accident, of course, but all these little things contributed to pulling Forrest back in all the time. When we got that point against Man City, it looked like we were going to sort of just just coast away a little bit and and maintain that little bit, a bit like Palace, you know, just stay bottom up, stay above. Bottom. Yeah, and 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 it was just all those little things kept pulling his back. And then when they finally got Danilo performing, they finally got sort of the defence sorted. And and it, and it looked like again that Cooper had settled on in eleven. You know, everyone spoke about all these players. That confidence came in. We had a number nine on the pitch. Whichever way he did it, he scored goals. He's not the cleanest striker of a football. Don't need to be that proven. <laughs> yeah. Don't need to be a number nine on the pitch. And and again, I go back to that belief that Southampton game because of what had happened in those previous games when we got beat. I think they believed, even though we was getting outplayed a little bit, Ward Price was running the show. 
But yeah. even though we was outplayed, they believed they could stick the ball away at the other end. And it was that ultimately it all just fell into place quite nicely. And and the momentum, like Daw says, we're open to take it forward and put a few signings in and go forward. But I'm sure we'll come to that. We will. Swin, what was your feeling like after the going into the Crystal Palace game? You're safe. I don't oh, want yeah. everyone to contribute. Finally, well, all of your anxiety and 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 you, you, I bet you'd switch back on for that game. Yeah, yeah, Ooh. it was well, whacker, whacker, wasn't it? Whacker, whacker, <laughs> whacker. <whacka. laughs> I mean, the guys were there. It was just—I've uh, never seen nothing like it. I've never seen. Uh, I, I mean, you must know, Ben. You've been to a lot more away games than I have in the past and whatnot. But it was non-stop. In, in the uh, we went in the George uh, London Bridge before yeah. the game and uh, we got there quite early um and the fans there it was just for about six seven hours it was non-stop waka waka absolutely <laughs> unbelievable the atmosphere was i mean you know des there's non-stop singing in sensational, the game sensational it's crazy it was, it was funny because i was singing waka waka and we saw the tourists across the road and i'm thinking yeah. what are you singing I'm like waka waka and it was like the atmosphere was it was just like whoo Stress free because we know Kev Everton Leicester on lead when they were stressing like yeah, that. Stress but, but we didn't care. We we, we just celebrated and I was saying whack whack to them. I like I didn't even know the words, I was just saying whack whack. So <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that atmosphere was oh, in the but stadium I, I as well. Think, no I stop. think like Swin said, you know, did, we have been to quite a few games. I've been going since you was yeah. banging the goals in Kev. And yeah. and that was the last time we had that kind of season, you know, where we where we could get really really excited. Um, the atmosphere has never been like it. It's never ever been like it. I don't know what's what's what somebody's lit a torch paper and the the whole club has just got so excited. You know, of course, Steve Cooper's played his part. The owners played his part as well in in backing him, you know, and doing things around the club. You can't. You can't disguise that fact. Um, so that so they've really sort of invested in that sense. But the, the atmosphere, like Swin says, for seven hours, we all could. We, none of us could speak for four days. You know, <laughs> I, I couldn't. Know. I couldn't. Well, that that you know, waka waka song is still in your head days afterwards. Yeah, but, yeah, but don't, you, don't you find as the, the, as a fan, the fan base, the atmosphere, because you've been out of the Premier League for such a long time. And then you're back in. And the relief of staying up. Look at the trajectory since Steve Cooper's been at the club. The trajectory of the club is like that. It levels out a little bit, but you're still going on that, on that trajectory, guys. That's probably why the fans feel it. Because what seemed like probably six, seven, eight weeks previous, a lost cause, all of a sudden, you're safe. And you're going into your last game, and it doesn't matter. And I think what you've got, Kev, this time, you know, normally when you're in that relegation zone, you'll know from when we've been there before. You've got you, you, your fan base is probably a bit 50 50, and as the season goes on, um, they, they go a bit 40 60, 25, 75 against the manager. Yeah, start dropping. Yeah. But, but obviously, because of what Cooper's done and the fact we've been away so long and we went on such a run in the championship. You know, we, we, with the squad he inherited, he, he, yes, we added to it in the January. But because there was probably about 80% still behind him, there is a vocal sort of 20%. I don't know. Um, I'm there there, there always up. is. There always is. Trust me, there always will be. So because there's 80%, you know, it drowns out everything else. The city ground, you know, I, Palace was amazing, but some of the atmosphere... In the city ground in the last two seasons, it, this season, you know, we you, you start looking at games and you go, Arsenal was incredible, Southampton the night there, the Brighton game was incredible, yeah. when we beat Liverpool was incredible, Wolves in the League Cup, you know, and 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 then you start thinking which was the best, and yeah. you just can't really pick between them. <laughs> so, what's your favourite, Des? <laughs> and yeah. yours, win and yours, door. People uh, in chat as well. What's I best game? My favourite was. was I tell you which one was really, really special for me was Manchester City. We we, we drew that game one one, yeah. But, and we tried to help Arsenal out as well. And look what happened to Arsenal. We tried, we couldn't get it done. Relax, <laughs> that that 
that game in the second half, and and they said it on Five Live. There was bits going around Twitter, like little snippets. Um, Pat Nevin was talking, incidentally, saying just soak all this in, you know. And and as we come back into that game and got something, the crowd basically willed them in because, like in many games, City had City had had ninety percent of possession. But the one that really got me, Kev, was that Southampton one. Do you know the nerves? Were like, yeah. oh, Topsy turvy, was it? it? Was back yeah. and forth. Every time James Ward Price had a free kick, like in his own half, we was all like. <laughs> 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 stick one on someone's head, you know. It, it was he's incredible, but the the game, you know, the way it was, it went, and and we was always just in front, which I think yeah. made it worse because we was always thinking this is going to be the big letdown. Brentford had not been long before, and you're thinking, don't do this to us again yeah. because if we yeah. if we lose it, we're going to lose our chance. That was a live game, wasn't it? I remember watching that one. Yeah, I think How I ate used about ten years. <laughs> How about you, Swin? Which which game for you was the one? The one I'd say the Arsenal game. Um, and and the funny funny thing about that one was it nine minutes added on at the end? Yeah, it was nine minutes so long. Added. And that that was um, that was so nervy. But then obviously with the final whistle and the relief and everything, uh, and I just thought you know because we beat Arsenal as well, you yeah. know, beating you know second you place. You done it the right way, didn't you? You done it the yeah. right way by yeah. winning. Yeah. So. And obviously, once we won that, that's it. We're, we're safe. You're safe. Um, yeah. What about yeah, you, I mean, uh, I mean you, Des is right. The Southampton game's nervy. I mean, there, there haven't been many games that have been nervy at the City Ground. Yeah. It's, been, it's, Mine, been a, it's been a roller coaster ride. Mine's because I think I've got to agree with Des, Southampton. Because the last five minutes, I was, I was like, oh, for Christ's sake. And like, again, War Prowse, every time we, that he was getting three kids, I was like, oh, for I was like, I can't. Uh, my, I think it was about what about six minutes time it on in that, yeah, in that game yeah, as well. Minutes, and I yeah. was like stressing, oh come on, we can't, we can't mess this up because if we did, if we lost that, like, or even drawn that, like, I think we would have been down. If I'm honest, but that's one of the best games. But atmosphere wise, Arsenal, that's what, like I said, it's one, it's one of the best atmospheres I've witnessed as a Forest fan. So that, that's and I've got to ask this question, and I've got to ask this question: What did you do after the game, guys? I, I do nothing. I, I, I'll just um, I, shut I, up, you. Yeah, yeah, you didn't listen. I remember I text you straight away. You did. You did. I was. You I did. did. You know, he he, he wind, tried to wind me up, saying that I'm running from him. I texted him because I was so I was so delighted for Nottingham Forest to stay up. I text door straight after the game. Congratulations, you, you deserve it. But what did you do after the game, guys? Because the act. I mean, you must have went to the boozer. Well, I, 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 wait, 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 wait. I, I, I don't give all the chat. I don't drink. Kevin's trying. I, I drank orange juice. Orange juice. Orange, orange, orange juice. Orange, orange, all right, all right, vodka and orange then. All right. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I was in the TBI. I went TBI. So I celebrated. TBI. Yeah. Go on, then. Where, where, where was you, Dad? Go on. Where was you? I went straight to the pub, Kevin. I was out all night. <laughs> You know, I love it. So it, it probably contributed to the reason I'm do, I'm not drinking in June. I'm not had a drink in June because I needed a little bit of a rest. Yeah. At the end of the season and then wins, you know, they needed celebrating properly. So properly, yeah. I've not had a drink in June, so I'm doing well as well. And everybody <laughs> in the chat, tell me where you were, what pubs you chat. were. Big up the pubs. <laughs> so Ben, where did you go, Door? I went, where did I go? I went, after the game, I, I saw, I think I saw Dad on Trent Bridge. He was, he, was, he, was, he was doing his, what he was doing, and I was, I think I was so excited. You know what? Seeing people's faces saying that we stayed up in the Premier League. Yeah. And because of what happened, as you know, it's been a um, crazy season for us, but just seeing everyone and just hugging everyone. I saw my little girl as well. She was happy as well. So, um, but yeah. I was, I was just, I was excited. I was buzzing. And I was, uh, like, as, as everyone was, Kevin texted me. Uh, so shout out to Curtis Shaw. Curtis t- texted me as well. And, and said, we deserve to win. We do. That's we what do. we do. Because you know what? We've got a lot of respect for you and Nottingham Forest. Obviously, one of my ex-teams. And listen, you left the little slot there for Everton to slip into. <laughs> which, respect to you guys. Respect to you. Right, listen. Let, let me get to question three. Because I think this is really an important one. Steve Cooper, the job Steve Cooper done 
obviously from last season, you get to be you get to be in the Premier League through you get to Wembley, you get that day at Wembley, you get the trophy, your Premier League side, the fixtures come out, and the city, the city of Nottingham's bouncing. Then you go into the league and it's things are things are not only quicker, but the quality you start to realize, hold on a minute. If we don't find our feet, blah, blah, blah. What kind of job did Steve Cooper do over the season, guys? Oh, swear, Let's get the with, you, you, Let's go with for it. Well, it is. It was awesome. I mean, look at everything was against us, like Des said earlier. I mean, we've not been in this uh, Premiership before after so many years. Um, a totally new team, was it? Was it? Well, wacka wacka 30 signings. So, um, I mean, to get him to jail, the injuries, it's just that it, it was against adversity. Every, everything they threw at him, it, and uh, he came through. And and look, at, I mean, it's not only that, it's his personality, the way he is with the fans. You know, he, it, it, it's great, he's, you know, the way he's brought the club together. Mm. Des, what about you? What, what type of job do you reckon? Uh, and, and what... Accolade should Steve Cooper get for the season just gone? He should get a new long-term contract for me. You know my thoughts, Kev. You know we, like I said before, we spoke at length one morning, and we were we were that much in sort of awe of him in the promotion season. We were talking about liking him to Cluffy in some ways, not not exactly the same, but but in many ways. But for me, I, I just think you know there's been a lot of noise. Like I say, there always is. You know, I don't want to make this negative. About about his tactics, this player, that player, you know, this, that, and ever. I'll, I'll maintain my opinion. At times, we were the worst team in the Premier League. Uh, we couldn't keep the ball. The midfield wasn't good enough. You know, whoever they played in there at times, it, we we didn't keep the ball. We made too many stupid mistakes. We didn't gel the team at times and things like that. And people might put that on Cooper, but. We stopped up because of Steve Cooper, not despite Steve Cooper. We stopped up because he he found a way of working with players like he always does, building relationships, putting his trust in certain people at certain times. Do you know there were games? There the, there were games. I, I remember the Leeds game at home. Jack Colback played half a football, half a game of football. You know, and he made the difference that day. Do you know, because it was somebody Steve Cooper could trust. There, there's all these names coming in. Foyers, Mangalas, Danilo, who, who people really sort of set their hearts on and wanted them to be spectacular. But it's, at times it was the players Cooper could trust and he played them at the right times in certain games. You know, we managed to put our heads in front in that Leeds game. Brennan Johnson scored a great goal. And then Jack Colback sort of sat in midfield and, and did what he did. And, and without those kind of results, without holding on in them kind of games, you know, it makes a world of difference. And you see some of the... In the Palace game, especially when we was looking at the celebrations, you've seen the the players that have come on so well as well, like Ren and Loddy at left back, almost crying on the pitch because he doesn't want to leave. You know, Tyro one year he, he come in for some flat. You know, I mentioned before he doesn't strike the ball well, so when the ball isn't at the back of the net, you know, he's under pressure. But again, uh, an arm around him, you know, coaching, talking, you know, finding. Make, making it work for him, it makes a difference. And then making big decisions as well. Dropping some of his trusted players at times. Brennan Johnson had to sit out a few, you know, because at that point he needed him to work it into the team. It wasn't, I don't think Steve Cooper would have been thinking, well, I've got to get him out of the team. But then, and, and the last point I'm going to make on this, almost helping players come back to form when they'd lost confidence. It was hard getting walked all over by Erling Ireland. But Joe Worrell in the last, Five or six weeks, yeah. absolutely immense. Do you know, and again, we know he's got that bond with with the manager, but it's it can quickly go when you're not in the team, do you know, and when you're not when you're not performing and get, and and getting the results. So I just think all the things we talk about his personality and what he does. I think one I, I said that was going to be the last point, but one real key moment <clears throat> for me was before the Brentford game. He kind of admitted that we're going to have to let... If fans had listened to his interviews the way I do, you know, I hang on to every word. If He admitted we are not going to have the football. You know, we are not yeah. going to have the football to win football matches because we, 
because the mid he didn't say it, but in my opinion, because the midfield didn't work, they they had to sit so deep. You know, and they had to let teams have the ball. And he got massive criticism after Brentford because he took off a one year who was limping, who was tired, and Johnson who was limping. And he got massive criticism. But we were never going to get the ball up front. We yeah. were one nil. We're never going to get it to them. Yeah. And without mistakes, we'd have won that game. And if we'd have got through it, it'd have been hailed, it'd have been hailed as a masterclass. So I just think the job is done in certain games, and people forget instances when we did well. Do you know when when his decisions won us football matches. They might look at, oh, why doesn't he play Sam Surridge? Why doesn't he play this player, this player? You know as much as anyone, Kev. When a player's not in the team, all of a sudden he's a world beater. Yeah. You know, everybody's clamouring for him. But he, he had to make those big calls, you know, and he must, like any manager, would have made unpopular calls. And, and, and of course, we'd all rode, rode that wave of enthusiasm from the Championship. We wanted to see that team. But he had to. He got given all those signings, and they said work with it. And he had to adjust his tactics at times as well. He had to move away from his philosophy. So I think that's just credit to what he is as a person, you know, and the fact that he also brought everybody into it from from door, you know, to the fan on the street. Just a little tale. So I need to go on here because I'll let someone else speak. I've never met Steve Cooper, and I'm fuming about this. <laughs> <laughs> the door, doors met him loads of times every every week, I think. And and Steve Cooper was was running with Andy Reid down by the river, and he ran past Kay, you know, really, my wife and the dog. And Kay, rather, she she'll kill me for saying, but she rather she, rather shocked to see him at that point. She said, "Wow," and Steve Cooper just went, "Morning." <laughs> and laughed and chuckled away. And I just think that just shows, doesn't it? You know, he's got a feel for what's going on around here. Just, you know, a sense of what people are thinking and doing and how much they enjoy joy him, you know, enjoy him being part of our club because we all we all absolutely adore the guy. What about you, Dor? What's your thoughts on the job Steve Cooper done? Amazing. I said, like, it was his first time in the Premier League. Um... And he said, I think it was at Wembley or whatever he says, there's going to be more downs than ups. And then I think that time when it was when Swin and Desmond went to the Leicester game, we all thought it was gone. We all thought it was gone. I think I spoke to you um, about it, Kev, as well. We all thought it was gone. Um, but to get the contract, and then the game gets Brighton, we draw nil nil. It wasn't great. But we that had was to. Away, wasn't it? That was a way. Yeah. Because Brighton at that time, they were, I think they were seventh or sixth. Seventh, yeah, they're flying. And, they were, and, they were, and to get a point against them, and then we beat Liverpool next game. And I think, I think after the World Cup, we started well. The way, the way form wasn't great, as everyone knows. But to get the, the, the for, for what he did, Kev, especially. The game, what game was it? I think it was. Um, I don't know what game was was the Aston Villa game. We were, I think we were poor, shocking. Um, I think I, I, it was an interview after the game. He said he said something in the lines of, "We, we need to book up now because we, if we don't book up, we, we're going to be out big, of time. run out of time." The game against, like I said, the match against. I think it was the Liverpool game that Des spoke about. We lost, but the energy that is said, the, 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 I think it was after the Liverpool game, so he, he wants that. He wants that. He needs that in every game. We need that every yeah. game. And what happened? Score goals. Taiwan scores goals. Danilo comes in. Who should praise for that? Steve Cooper. Mm-hmm. And he's had his doubts, as you know, Kev, like people on talk sport or whatever I said. Remember, it was Tony, Cast- Tony Castorino said he's going to be the first person. Oh, your mate, Dor, your mate, Cass- Tony Cass. <laughs> Tony Castorino said he'd be sacked. How many managers got sacked? 13, 14 managers sacked. And the, the, all, the, all the nonsense that was coming from him with all the, um, the, the 30 players, we all know that Cooper didn't sign them all. Mm-hmm. The guy's did a fantastic job. It's, he, he, he said he's going to. This first season was a learning curve for him. Big learning curve for him. So for me personally, 
for him to stay for the whole season. All, all Forest fans, we all know that every time it's always halfway through the season. If we don't play well, we get sacked. That's what Forest fans are used to. So for that, for him to stay from, and especially in the Premier League as well, for him to stay, Mikel, he's, he's, a, he's a legend. Legend gets thrown around way too easy in this, in, in this era. But for me, he's a legend. I hope, we, we know Kev, we, there's going to be more pressure on him. More pressure because... Next season, yeah. Yeah, next season's going to be more pressure on him. But for me personally, Kev, he, he, I, I, said it, I said it all the time, he's, he's a legend in my eyes. But I keep on going, but he, he's just a legend. Well, I, 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 here's one thing I will say. I think Steve Cooper learned, he was learning on the job, we know that. I thought he adjusted to the Premier League fantastically. He realised what he had. Couldn't play like you did last season. Because if you play open like you did last season, you'd, end, you'd be relegated. So we worked out a system. He brought in the right players. And you started off with a low block and you made the most of some of your some of the weapons going forward. I thought Brennan Johnson, a one year, I thought really made the most of them. Um, midfield started to gel together. And and that's why I wanna I wanna I wanna say to to you guys about Steve Cooper and anybody listening, I think that learning curve in his first season is so important to have in his in his back pocket now because there's no trepidation anymore. He knows what it's like to go to Anfield. He knows what it's like to go to Old Trafford. He knows what it's like Man City coming to the city ground. He knows what it's like. He knows the, the, what the top players can do. A lot of those players, I believe, who have never played in the Premier League, all of a sudden have grown up now. They've grown up. They've gone to a level now where this is their second. This is going to be their second season in the Premier League. Guys, you know, it's not the first. I haven't been in the Premier League for 20 odd years. Steve Cooper took you out of the Championship, took you to the Premier League, and kept you there. That's mm. massive. Same, so, same. on that note, let's talk about free players. So, question number four is Brennan Johnson. Oh, okay. I'm going to go with Swin. Will Brennan Johnson stay? At City, in your opinion, and what type of season do you expect from him next season? Personally, I, I think for his own benefit, he should stay. I mean, we all definitely want him to stay, but for his own benefit and his own uh, progression, I think he's better off at Forest. You know, even if it's just for another season. And I, 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 obviously, Forest don't want to sell him. I mean, what are the rumours? 30 million from Brentford? And that would be a steal because he's, he's, he's what was he, 21, 22 still? 22, 22. The peak, the peak is what, 27, 28? He, he, I mean, the way he works, he works hard. He keeps improving. What was it, a few seasons ago, he was playing for Lincoln, Division 1. He stepped up to the Championship and he showed he can do it. He, you know, he's, he's definitely a Premiership player. So, in my opinion, I think he should stay definitely another season. And if he does well this season, bangs in the goals. And, what, do you expect, uh, Win? what do you expect from him this I, season? I think he will. I think he will this season. I think what, he will. What do you expect? I mean, he's, he's I mean, still what did he, get? he got double figures, didn't he? He got double figures this season. Did in he? all competitions. I think he did. I think Maybe. he got oh, double figures. Yeah. yeah. In I all comps. He did. Yeah, he got yeah. double figures. So yeah. if he gets double figures again next season, yeah, yeah. I, I think certainly if in Premier in the Premier League, if he's get doubles figures, then his value is going to go go Start crazy. Yeah. I mean, is he is he not the quickest player in the Premiership? Quickest with with Kyle Walker, I think he was. There's some stats somewhere, and and he's a good finisher as well. I mean, you get these players who are really quick and can't finish, mm. but um, Johnson can finish. So I reckon, I mean, and especially with his dad to guide him, I think he'll stay. Uh, hopefully he has a good season and, you know, obviously I'd like to keep him longer, but if he goes at, um, the following season, then fair enough. What about you, Des? What's your thoughts on Brennan Johnson? Um, will he stay? And what do you expect from him next season? Well, I think he's absolutely brilliant. You know, I think 
I think without his goals, we would be in the championship. I'm not saying he's the only contributor, but he has been a genuine match winner on at least four or five occasions. You know, I think the Leicester game when he got that brace, you know, the finishes in that game were incredible. The Leeds game, you know, that he was the difference. He was the only bit of quality in the game. And there's a there's a couple of others he scored in and, and, and really made a difference. He's got that link as well with Morgan Gibbs White, hasn't he? Do you know, and and I just think it's so important to keep hold of him and keep building. I don't think he'll go this season. Um, my, my gut feeling is he won't. What what I would say is, um, and and everybody's fuming at the fact it's Brentford. What I would say, just playing devil's advocate a little bit, Brentford are keen on him, aren't they? That that they've been there before. They've been in for him. Twenty million. What it does? Twenty million. You know what it's like, Kevin. If a club wants you and they keep showing interest and they keep showing interest, then perhaps one day, if the price is right and the manager and they want to sell you, you know that's the club to go to. So I wouldn't completely rule that out, but I do think the value is 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 way short, and I, I do think he'll stay this season, and I think he should be aiming a little bit higher himself. When Brent, Brentford signed. Uh, when Aston Villa signed Ollie Watkins from Brentford for forty million, he'd not played in the Premier League, um, or or he'd not he'd not done what Brennan Johnson's done in the Premier League at least. So what what anybody's signing now in Brennan Johnson is a guy who played in a struggling team, who who struggled to get chances created for him, and he still got double figures. And ten goals in the Premier League these days is is priceless. It's the old twenty. I'm telling yeah, you, it's not. Nobody scores thirty goals in the Premier League apart from Ireland, obviously. Yeah, true. <laughs> well, that's a freak. Um, so, so ten go for for ten goals and winning four or five game of football. You spend a lot of money these days. You look at other other players like Gwendia, you know, who came from Norwich to Villa, and he he he's not really. And he was he was about 35, 40 million, I think. So so with Brennan Johnson, you've got a guy who, like Dawes says, played at Lincoln, played one season in the championship, tore that apart, you know, and and then he's played a, a season in the Premier League. Imagine the chances he'd be sticking away if he were playing that well for Manchester United, you know, with that midfield behind him, with with that amount of possession and the amount of chances the that quality that they've got. Yeah. yeah, you're talking that they're talking about superstars and people like Garnacho and people like that. I'd rather have Brennan Johnson, genuinely. I'd rather have Brennan Johnson. And when you start looking at stats, I, I'm not a big stats man. I like to watch what I see on the pitch. But for, for, for a player his age, he's only been in, involved in less goal, third most goal involvements behind Saka and Martinelli. A player of his age, and and look at where they are in the Premier League. So that that just says it all, doesn't it? He's a real quality player. I hope he stays. I hope he can kind of fire Forest up the league to me. You know, and taking, I, I don't want him to leave ever because we love our own grown players. You know, he's one of our own. But taking the sentiment away from it, I hope he fires Forest up for a really comfortable position where Forest can wheel and deal and and things, and he gets a move to the top one of the top, top teams, because I think he'd be a, a real asset in some of those teams. Hmm. What about you, Dor? Brennan, stay, go, or, and what do you expect next season? As you know, okay, everyone's got a price. Everyone's got a price. Um, me, me personally, because like I said, just mentioned Lincoln, smash it there, smash the championship, comes to the best, best league in the world, scoring 10 goals in all competitions. Is that a good season? Is for me. Um, I, I, for me, I think Ben's worth at this moment because we can mention. I don't know if Kevin agree with me. Is he is he on the same level as Gordon? Where Gordon was at Everton? Because I don't know if, if well, he's done better. He's done better than Gordon. Do you, do you think? Yeah. What, what did Gordon go for? To, to Newcastle. What Gordon, did Gordon? Yeah, all of it for fifty million. How, how, how much was that? To Newcastle. Million. Was that 45, was 50 million, something like that? Yeah, so by the way, wow. and I was talking to a Forest uh, Everton fan about it, and they said to me, oh, Johnson's done a better time what Gordon did at Everton. So, if you look at it, Burnley had a good season. So, I, I personally think 
everyone's got a price, but at the same time, I want him to stay. If Brennan, does, we, we all know Brennan has got to, to step a notch now because that Desert Swin will know. The end of the back of his last season, he didn't start against Chelsea. He didn't start against, um, I don't know who else was there. It was all game he didn't start. I thought, okay, okay, maybe he's resting in blah, blah, blah. He, he, he's definitely got to step up. If he wants to be a Premier League, we should, be, we should appreciate these teams wanting Brennan. Mm-hmm. Because we can say, we want to say, oh, Brennan's not going, blah, 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 this and that. But he's playing good, so people are watching him. Brentford, they're a mid-table team, aren't they? If you look at that's it. That's where you want so, to be. Yeah, that's you know where I mean? we want to be. So, so if you look at it, I want Brent to stay, but he's got to step up a notch. And listen to me, the kid, he's, he's 22. And I remember, and the, the game was, was embarrassing because the pressure that guy's been on, and Desert Swim won the Aston Villa away game, he was getting so much abuse and this and that. From a young kid, so much pressure on him. And Des says, if it wasn't for him, would have been the championship, and and that, and that is a fact. So he's done fantastic for us. I want him to stay, but Kevin, everyone, everyone's got a price. So, but I want him to stay. That's what that's my answer. I want him to stay. And his levels, he's got to go up a level next season, right? He's got to. He's got to. He's got no choice because if he stayed level where he was last season, then you're everyone, going to go back. Then you yeah, go people are going to figure him out. People, people figure him out. Oh, Brand does this because. Sorry, I don't want to carry on. In the championship, there's only one person on him. But now he's in the Premier League, he's playing against better players. It's even two players, even even two players was on him as well, and he was struggling. I remember the Wolves game. There's three players on him, and he couldn't he couldn't do nothing. And yeah. when you're in the Premier League, that what happens. So yeah, that's but that that's what happens though because the, as someone mentions there he went missing in games. Do you know he got marked out a lot of games because mm. we had nothing. We had we had none of the ball. Teams could afford to stick extra men on him. Do you know they they could afford to let people have the ball in midfield because Forest weren't keeping it long enough. We were just giving the ball back to them. So sometimes it, the grass is always green on the other side. Like I say, without his goals, Tyro wouldn't have had the opportunity to kick in. Because it had all been too late. And I think we mentioned those games at the end of the season. He set up a lot of Tyro's goals as well. The Southampton game, he put that one across. The first goal, all important. And I think we just have to remember how good this kid is. It, it, with better players, if Forrest made some good, strong signings, it wouldn't necessarily be Johnson stepping up a level, it, but the team stepping up a level. Creating more opportunities, all of a sudden he's got a couple. Yes, of we're getting there. Don't say too much. Don't <laughs> say too much. Hey, listen, you, you touched on a player there, and I want to get Swin's take on this. Now, I want you. How important was he for you guys? Ooh. Well, no, he's, he's, I mean, we keep going back to that Liverpool Liverpool away game. Um, I mean, the the one before that was Villa. It's very toxic. As, as Des mentioned with Johnson, uh, that it was horrible to be in the way end then uh, when the final whistle went. But um, and then Cooper came out with, "Look, we need to get stuck in." And funny enough, they got stuck in. But for Tyro, uh, that that Liverpool game, he, he caused a bit of havoc in that defence. Uh, they, they couldn't really handle him. And then from then on, um, we sh- we saw the real Tyro. And uh, if he starts like that next season and obviously stays injury free, I, I think he's massive. Might and obviously, tough. on the flip side, you've got um, um, what's his name on the bench? I forgot his name now. You got some player, Wood. Chris Wood Chris on the Wood. bench. Chris Wood. So, obviously, you'd rather have Tyro in your team the way it finished last season. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, I obviously, it was massive a lot better than Chris Wood. Season. He was massive. Yeah. What about you, Des? Tyro? I want you. I think he's really important. I think he's he, he's obviously still a little bit raw, Kev. You know, yeah. some of the comments I've made about him, I, I stick by. You know, with his his sharpness sometimes in front of goals. What he needs, he needs to be instinctive. He needs to be between the post. You know, on the penalty spot, on the edge of the six yard box, when the ball, 
We used him a lot. And again, Cooper got a lot of criticism, rightly or wrongly, you know, earlier in the season. He was used on the left-hand side. I can see why sometimes, because when you haven't got much of the football, you've got to work the channels. You've got to create opportunities. Again, it's about understanding the game a little bit. So, it, it, at that time, I see why that was the case. But once we got the rest of the team right, you know, and, and, and he, he hit on a formula, he, he was absolutely priceless in that one. And I think he's somebody now... I think before his little run of form, you'd have probably thought, I wonder if he'll stay, I wonder if he'll move on. But now you see that real potential in having him there, working with him, you know, but, but most of all, just getting him into goal scoring positions. And you know, if the ball falls right for you in the box, you know, you made a career of it, Kev. Got to take you, know, it. Yeah. You, you stick it away and it doesn't matter how it goes in. So I think there's a lot of a lot of potential still. There's still a lot of work to do with Tyro. But I'd, I'd keep him around and perhaps, again, I'd one or two additions. The, the most important for Tyro, and I'm sure we'll, you'll cut me down, is Morgan Gibbs-White. You know, and the way he provides these guys, Jock Brennan and Tyro, with service, with, with him on the pitch, them two have got a chance of doing their job really well. Mm. What about you, Dor? A one you? Sure. Um, but... At the start of the season, I was, yeah, scored against West Ham. Then, this is like before he got injured. I thought, oh, is he good? Is he great? And then, when he come back, I thought, so, he, he, he needs to now because we're in big trouble. But as Swin said, that game against Liverpool, he bullied, I think it was Canate. Canate, Canate, yeah, Canate. Canate he bullied him. I thought to myself, if he does that from now to the end of the season, we've got a player. And what did he do? He's, 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 I don't know, how old is he? I don't know. I think he's about 21. Really young. He's young. He's young. Really he's young. young. Yeah. And when I was speaking to Forest fans, and, the, and some players will say, some fans will say, oh, he's not good enough. He's not good enough at all. He's, um, because the, he's not. The thing with. with, with was relying on Brennan and Mog Gibbs White too much. Yeah. And then when they got injured, like we brought Chris Wood, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I thought, I personally thought he was going to go back to German football because he, 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 I think he was third top scoring in the German league, wasn't he? But um, the last six games for me, Kev, what a player. And, that's, really what we, and that's what we missed. I'm not saying he, 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 like he didn't remind me of like a Davis, Kevin Davis, we had last season, that other season. But for me personally, if he can do that form, the last six games, the next season, we've got one heck of a player. And I'm yeah, excited. That's the hard, that's that's the hard, hard bit. Part. Exactly. But, we, but I think we need someone who can challenge him. Because, like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to disrespect Chris Wood at all. At all. Chris Wood's not a turn I want he, at all. We need someone who can challenge him because if we can get someone who can challenge Tyler Wanley, and Tyler Wanley can use that energy, if he can, oh, I don't want to lose my place. We've got fantasy play, Kev, and, I, and I want it, I want it. And I'm, I'm, he's still young, like Brendan, like Morgan, and we can, I think we've got one heck of a player. Okay, so there's one more player I want to discuss, and um, this is for you, Swin Jesse Lingard. Whoa. Chat, I'm chat, looking, chat. People in the chat. Why? I'm talk about this. Lingard because I'm, obviously it didn't quite work out for Jesse. Yeah. Um, so what's your thoughts on, on why? I'd rather talk about Gibbs White. <laughs> but, um, no, I know you would, but yeah. we, we can't just have the, the good stuff. Yeah. We've got to discuss, you know, a, a, yeah. a player like Stop Jesse. Time, Roger, Swin. Swin, I got things. Now you stop dodging it. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, at the beginning, obviously, it, it was like a marquee signing, like putting Forrest on the map, you know, a, a big name player. Um, but obviously not worked out for him. It's not worked out for us. And um, and, and now he's gone. I think, was it the Tottenham Cup game? Yeah. Uh, Caribou Cup was probably his finest moment. And um, obviously in the season, that's just not, not enough. Um, he, he got, he, he got, he, he obviously started playing, got injured. Then I think Manu away, he got injured in the warm up. 
Yeah. So he never really got started. He never got started. And then, uh, um, and obviously the end of the season, we, we had more of a settled team. So he wasn't going to get a look in anyway. Um, but yeah, it's it's just one of the, you know, I wish it, obviously we all wish it worked and, out. And it didn't and work out for you, Sweet. It, it, it's great in the dressing room. He's still stuck. You know, even when he's injured, he's still turning up, you know, geeing the boys up and everything. Great on the pitch, doing his dancing. But in terms of on the pitch and playing, just never worked out. Never works out. Mm. What about you, Des? Your think, just your what, thoughts, your brief thoughts on Lingard. I think you what you have to think with Lingard is there's bigger flops in the Premier League than just there's bigger risk and bigger flops in the Premier League than Jesse Lingard has been for Forest. <laughs> you know, it has, it's not worked. Like Swin says, it's not it's not really um happened. Well, you was never going to turn it down if it could happen at the start of the season, was you? He was that marquee signing. He was the statement signing. And then all the others followed on from there. And if it had worked out, it would have been a masterstroke. You know, he, 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 again, with that bad luck I mentioned before, he's had a couple of injuries he, at the wrong times. He just found some form in the League Cup. He had a great League Cup one. Um, but... He, he, he got injured and, and he missed games and then it, it just <clears> never really happened. I, I think um, people are a bit harsh on him. Do you know, it, it's not worked. It's as simple as that. When you sign five players, Kev, you know, two of them probably not work most of the time. Yeah, if you, if sometimes you, if you three. Sign, <laughs> if you sign, yeah, do you know, and you're just looking for those ones that do. So for me, do you know, it's not work. Everybody moves on. I'm sure it's all with goodwill and, and, and whatever. And, and we look for somebody else who can. Somebody made a comment there, though. He did influence a couple of games earlier in the season. The West Ham game, I remember, was really... Um... Can, I, can I echo Des? About that? I'm, I'm sorry, Des. What, what, I think when we signed Jesse, I, I personally think he sh we signed too late because he didn't have a pre-season at all. And... He just didn't get going, and I mentioned that that that, that role that he played, that number ten role that he played, was so important for Forest because in the Championship we had Ziggenau, got James Garner, he played at Everton, and all that, but it just didn't work. And then when Morgan comes, what Sam Morgan gives White took him. That, that that's Morgan's spot to take, and we could say Jesse Lingard it was a flop off the pit on the pitch, but people remember. I was, I was speaking to um, a few players. Um, Players, families, off the pitch, he helped a lot. Like the Brennan, yeah. Brennan Johnson, yes, more Gibbs White and the people the academy, he helped them a lot. I'm not saying I'm not trying to be a flag flag. Say, oh, Jesse Lingo was all this and that. He wasn't on the pitch, but off the pitch, people don't see it. I was speaking, like I said, to players, families. He's a fantastic off the pitch, helping the youngsters like Brennan because Brennan loved him. Brennan loved him. He helped him a lot. Mm -hmm. So, but so often I'm not like I said, I'm not saying. Jesse had a great time. I just wished he had a better preseason for us because we played I think Newcastle for the first game of the season. It was nothing. It was nothing. I thought so. You would have seen more of him then, wouldn't you? You would have seen. More yeah, we've seen so much more. But I was, I was disappointed with Jesse. But like I said, we can't. The, 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 the things that he's had, um, like with Manu, Everton, and England, and all that. So um, yeah. Good luck so him, okay. Please. Well, I'm glad you jumped in there, Ben. <laughs> so. Okay, probably the biggest question of the night. What's required at Forest? Cool. So let's go to Swin because Swin's been waiting patiently there. Swin, what's required? What's your requirement, should I say? Well, it, for next season we, at Forest. If we carry on where we left off and we have more of a settled team, obviously, if it's not going to be like last season, all these new additions, we, we've, we've got a bit of a core about us, we've got a bit of a spine. Um, definitely need Henderson, I think, in my opinion, to sign. Um, it'd be great if Lodi, I don't know what's happening with Lodi, when he's going to sign. He won't not. come. He won't uh, come. He won't come. Okay, fair enough. So, we, we, you know, we, we do need a few players, maybe about five, obviously if players are going to go out the door, maybe five or six additions that are better than what we've got. That's what we need. And, and you know, I'd love it to sign Henderson. That'd be great. Because obviously Cause he, that, he started well, didn't he? Henderson yeah, started yeah. the season so well. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd, 
obviously we need to spend money, still need to spend money, but they have to be better additions. And like I said, Quality, more, quality's got and, to go on. And, and there's, there's got to be a few out the door as well. But, right. uh, it, it's not a coincidence. Last season, when we, you know, from that Liverpool game, we, we had a much more settled team. So, it, it, I mean, uh, there's a lot said about the physios, like we ain't got a head physio or, you know, all these injuries and stuff like that. I wish they could sort that out as well. <laughs> well yeah. It's been that's ridiculous. Yeah. Des, what about you, Des? What's what's required in your eyes? Midfield. The midfield <laughs> needs sorting. You know, it's it's just not been there. It's been non-existent at times. We, we, the, the, the one player we could rely on, and, and again, people question his ability, was Ryan Yates. Mm. You know, he, 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 it, when he played, and he didn't play particularly well towards the end of the season, he's coming back from a long injury himself and his own personal issues, of course. But he made such a difference in 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 just just putting himself about, you know, doing the right thing. He's a dog in there, isn't he? Yeah. And 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 all season long for me, you know, we thought we cracked it with Foyer, you know, and and a bit of guile and a bit of class. That didn't work. We got we got Shelby come in and you know looked absolute class against Fulham in in, in a cameo appearance. In some of the passes he sprayed about. And it's just where we lost games of football, Kev. I mentioned that Chelsea game. We gave the ball away twice in midfield. People raved about Mangala towards the end of the season. I'm not saying he's a bad footballer and he improved massively. But again, still giving the ball away. And you know in the Premier League, possession is nine-tenths of the law. You cannot give the ball away because before you know it, that, that Chelsea game, for example, Raheem Sterling's side-footing it into the bottom corner. So for me, they've really got to shape up that midfield, and I, and I don't just think it's one addition. I think you're looking at almost three players to to, to play in there. We've got Danilo now, who's really really come to the fore as the attacking, almost like the fourth attacker. We thought he was the number six, but for me, the main one is the number six. Yates is a good option, but I think you need somebody else. Mangala's a good option. He's he's getting better. But it's players that can really keep hold of the football and really get stuck in. Because I think when we really hit rock bottom, like the Leicester games, the Leeds and Aston Villa games, the midfield had gone. Foyer lost confidence early on. And that really, really affected us. They, they didn't want to go forward. They, they were too far from the strikers. That's why when Yates did come in and we found this balance, we'd got Danilo linking it with Morgan Gibbs White, who was then linking it going forward, what I was talking about with Johnson earlier. And it, for me, if they if they don't make additions there, real quality, we'll just be in the same position next season. Because we can rave about Brendan Johnson, we can rave about Tyro Awanyi and Felipe and Lodi. But let's face it, these players were the ones that nearly got relegated. Thankfully, they didn't. You know, but they nearly did. So, we can be sentimental about all this all we want, but we need, like Swin says, a lot less three, four quality additions. The goalkeeper looks like the obvious one, you know, Anderson don't look like Navas will come back, which served as well in his time. He done you know, well. I thought he done well. Yeah. He, he done well. But the goalkeeper, it looks like we've got we've got the one centre back maybe to 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 add more competition. Felipe's done well. Bolly's done well. You know, after yeah. a sneaky debut, and Warrell really came back to the fore. So perhaps one more centre back, one goalkeeper, one more centre back. Like Dawes says, somebody to challenge Tyro, and then perhaps a winger, um, somebody who's a bit tricky, a bit. Des, you said that's thirty players. You're saying Des, that's thirty players. You're saying Des, come on. No, he <laughs> said four. Now players. it's about twelve. That was four. <laughs> And the fifth has got to be number six, and perhaps six because we'll have two number six. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I echo what, what about you, Dor? I echo what I said. The midfield is so important because all season, I remember the game against, um, I think it was Wolves at home. Again, the non assistant. Even the Leeds game when we beat 1 0 at Tiguan was, was still rubbish. Um, so, midfield is, is so important. We can mention. Danilo, a player that Arsenal wanted, but um, 
Never well, pulled the trigger on, did they? They never pulled yeah, the trigger on him. Exactly. And he was, well. a, he was a DM, but now he's a number eight for us, helping us with players like Muggins White and Johnson and scoring little, getting his goals in. But we, we still need another, a need another decent player. I was a massive fan with him before we throw that one of those. Massive fan for him. But he was just giving the ball way too easy. And as Des meant, as you know, in the Premier League, you can't get the ball away. So not me, too cheap. Not, not cheap. Too cheap. Exactly. So me personally would definitely need to improve midfield. Two experienced players that can challenge. I love Yatesy. Everyone knows how we feel about Yatesy, but we need a better player than him because Ryan Yates will know he's not one of the best players we've got. But I, but he'll, he'll give, give everything. He'll, he'll give, give everything. everything. But we, we've got to improve the midfield if we want to. If we don't want to play, be in the bottom half again this season. Okay, so let's. We're on. We're at number eight now. So this, this is going to start moving quick now, guys. <laughs> yeah, that does quicker. When, if, <laughs> if you could sign <laughs> one player to improve Nottingham Forest, who would you sign? Wow. Well, um, out of anybody. <laughs> yes. Out of, does it have to be realistic? Well, I'll be realistic. <laughs> People in the chat as well. All right. I, I tell you what you do. People in the chat as well. You one realistic and one fantasy. <laughs> well, well, fantasy, fantasy is Mbappe. <laughs> okay, sign Mbappe. Well, <laughs> Johnson on the right and Mbappe on the left. There you go. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be boring now. And uh, for me, priority has to be Henderson in goal. Has to be fair Henderson enough. in goal. That's fair enough. How I about you, Jess? Two players, Kev, and I will keep it quick. And they're probably <laughs> both just out of our range. Um, one player I'd really, really love for us to sign is uh, the guy at Wolves. What's his name? It slips me. Ruben Neves. Neves. I think he's. he's I think he's, he's, he's going to Saudi. He's going to Saudi now, Dad. Exactly. He, he's out of our range, you know. But what a player he is! I, I think he's incredible, and I think he'd complement that team well. And another player, I mentioned him earlier, do you know, midfield again, because that's the area, Ward Prowse. Mm. You know, I think he'd be yeah. a fantastic addition, had some real, real quality. We're probably just not quite there to sign players like that just yet, but you never know. Oh, Cheeky well, bid like for more. Really? He's gone, just gone down. Yeah. So... yeah. Well, yeah, but a cheeky bid like for Morgan last season, you know, it might be. It might be something they could go with, but I'd I'd really like to see Ward Prowse. But but if I could pick anyone, it'd be Neves. Neves. Yeah, I love it. What about uh, you, uh, Dor? Who would you? Um, the person I like, you know, fantasy, what? fantasy, and you realistic. Know I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I, people might criticize me, but try Grealish. Uh, role players because he he can he, he likes to draw foul. He can do. This season he's been fantastic from Man City. Works hard as well. Works hard. You got Haaland as well and the rest of them. But me, Jack Grealish, he's been top player. The player that are realistic player. There's quite a few. War Prowse. Um, another player that um, I've seen. No, you get one. Don't be trying no, no, to talk no, no, about no. another player. No, 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 no. The player that I, I, I really want is um, is uh, Tyler Adams from, from, from Leeds. From, That's from the player Leeds. I'll, yeah, Tal Adam. yeah, Tal Adams. I love him. I, I, right. That's the kind of midfield, midfield we need. Combative, if, tough, and can exactly. handle the ball. Yeah, so Tal Adams, yeah, that's a player I, I love to have. Okay. What's your predictions for the upcoming seasons? Oh, God. Oh, I can't, okay, man. It's too early for this, man. No, it isn't. Wait, listen. <laughs> Hey, the fixtures are out, guys. Come on. Oh, no. People in the chat as well. Where do you think Forest will finish? It's yeah. early. We'll do another one before the season starts. Go on. Uh, go on. Go on to win. Last season, I said 15th. And we just missed out because we didn't beat Palace. It would have been 15th. Gone above Bournemouth. I'm, oh, God. You know what worries me? Those first four away games. Six, oh, yeah. Man. Bloody hell. Oh, God. They, um, the Premier League, what the Premier League wants relegated. Yeah, and I'm, you know I'm, I'm looking at those first games. I'm worried for Cooper. You know, yeah, but obviously, Swiss, how patient in Maranac is going to be. Nobody is yeah. at full steam in yeah. the first eight games. Trust me. 
Right, okay. So I said 15th last season. This season, I'm going to go higher because I think we're better prepared. Um, had a decent run at the end and hopefully the injuries won't hit us as bad and it might be even a weaker league. So I'm going to go not much higher. I'm going to go 13th. I'll take that. You think the league's going to be weaker next season? I don't know. I just, I just think it is. How? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Um, I, 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 no, no. I, can I, can I echo what you mean? Luton saying? coming up, and I, no, I don't know. I, you know, so, no, all right. It's going to be weaker because you got three new teams. Yeah, I Kev, like you, kids. Kev, Kev, another thing. I think the the the, the teams who were weren't performing that well last season, like the Spurs, the Chelsea, uh, Liverpool. I think they'll do better and take quite a lot more points off the bottom teams. We'll see, won't we? Yeah, we will yeah. See. I think I think the top six will be stronger. And I think top top eight's going to be strong. Yeah, top eight. It's going to be yeah. eight. Yeah. What about we'll you, Des? Uh, I just I, I I think and I hope we'll slightly improve on this season. I think anything fifteenth, you know, I think we'll be slightly more comfortable. I think we'll be in a at times it'll be a bit hairy, you know, the those first six games as. If we don't win our two home games in that, you're going to be thinking, oh, God, and we're going to be getting to a situation where we were in the Leicester, the Leicester game, where you're bottom of the league with virtually no points. So I think I, I do agree with Swin. In many ways, I feel it's slightly weaker. So based on the fact I feel these teams like Luton, Sheffield United and Burnley coming up, although I fancy Burnley to do all right, um, I think based on that, Cooper's learned from the experience. Players will have learned. I've mentioned there about not quite being streetwise enough. You know, they'll be streetwise to the Premier League. They'll know what to do a little bit more. They'll know opponents, you know, a little bit more. And I think we'll we'll improve. And three, three to six signings, you know, and not, not have to rely on some of the subs. Because, again, one of the problems Cooper's had throughout his whole reign is he's had 11 players to pick. And not much beyond that. And that's happened in both seasons for me. The subs aren't stacking up. Whereas you talk about Grealish and Mares, you know, he takes one off and brings the other on. But far as subs aren't stacking up either. They've not there's not been players come off the bench and score a winner, you know, I use Surridge, people like that. So I think if you sign three or four players, add them to the players we've got, let a few go. And all those other reasons, I think we're, we're definitely in for improvement, perhaps 13th to 15th and a bit more comfortable. Dad, no, Dad, say it properly. F between 13th and 15th. 14th. Oh, so that's 14th, 14th. then, isn't it? That's 14th. <laughs> that's 14th. 13th, 13, 15, 14 is the middle. That's 14. it. Always one, doesn't it? Kev, are, you uh, it Dan? are you holding this to account, Kev? <laughs> Listen, I'm just saying. It looked like you were writing it down then. I'm, I'm writing it all down. <laughs> just for you guys. Just for this guy here. Okay. On, <laughs> okay. Uh, I said 14th. Did I say 14th last season? I said 14th. Um, I has been said, and I'm not trying to disrespect the other teams, I think it is a weaker league. Because when you've got teams like, no, dis and listen, I'm not trying to disrespect Luton. I'm not trying to dis. I want to be a bullshit. Disrespecting them, guys. No, I, like, no, no, no. I want to disrespect Sheffield United. It happens I every season. I know. I can't stand Sheffield United. Shout out to Johnny. That means that will know who Johnny is from the Sheffield United view. I can't stand Sheffield United. I hope we finish above them. Um, I think we'll finish. I think we we'll finished thirteenth. I want to be like a. I want to be like a Crystal Palace next season. You'd be Com in comfy. Mid. You can just yeah, get comfy. there and you're comfy. You not have to worry yeah. about no relegation. Mm. Because I'm, I, 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 I've seen this. Okay, I've seen. I've seen this. I saw a stat with Brighton, and when they came up, they started in the bottom half and they slowly took from step to step. It took them. It took them five years build, to get where they are. Build, but. You need the foundation now. Or what you've got is a foundation now. You've got to build on it. Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying I'll say 13th. 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 Um, yeah. I say 14th. 
I'm, I'm with like Des. That for now, Kev. I said, I've written down. Mine's down first. Yeah, but can we change it? But, but, with all the new signs, can we change it before the season starts? Of course. Cool, that's I'm all asking right, you now. People, wait, wait, because people in the chat, they always have me. Ben, you said this, said this, said yeah, this. Yeah, I'm not but having it. I'm going to say that, but when we get to, when, when you start stacking up your team, yeah. yeah. remember, we got until September the 1st. Yes. After that, I suppose I'll come and say, what do you think now? Yeah. Like, you know. Okay, then. Yeah. People in the chat, do not have got me, please. I'm just, it's just, think where I think now, okay? Right. If you have a go, I've got it dead. And last but not least, what games or game are you most looking forward to next season, Swin? Ooh. This is question 10. Home or away? I, I, I was, was going to say rivalry, Sheffield United, but I hate Sheffield United away. I do, no, I mean, I twice I've been there, I had a nightmare there. <laughs> um, don't forget, you done them in the playoff last season, so don't worry about yeah, that yeah, when it yeah, mattered. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got, I've, I think we've got a bit of hatred for Wolves now, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> and so, oh, with that, gives why, you know, that. Them saying, oh, we pay too much for him. So, I don't know. Um... Go on, Swid. Pick one. Go on, get one, get one, get one. Pick one. I'll pick one. I'll say Man City at home because now they're the trouble winners. So, I'd like to see them at home. Come down. Come down yeah. to the city ground and beat them. Yeah. <laughs> Love Des. that. Go on, Dad. What about you, Des? It's my lifelong ambition to see Faris win at Anfield. Yes. <laughs> I need to see this happen once. I need to just see this happen. You know, so so that's always the one that really, really sticks out. Um yeah, it what what I was kind of kind of gonna say is Leeds and Leicester. This season with the two teams, all football fans give you banter, you know, and I accept that, you know, I don't get into yeah, debate. Yeah, but there's, but, there's, but what Leicester fans come for me. No, they can't come for me. It was horrible, you know, when we got beat by those, oh, going down, going down, and, and it just felt like it was a little bit too far. I was getting pushed and kicked out of Ellen Road, going down, you know, calling us not very nice names because of things that happened years ago. And it just it just felt a bit smug when Leeds and Leicester both went down. I'm like, yeah, going down with who? <laughs> oh, it does. So oh. which? So it's Anfield, really? It's Anfield, Anfield. is your one. What about you, Dor? Because you've done uh, a few things that you wanted to do this season. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna echo, I'm gonna echo what does. I, I want to be Liverpool away. Was so close to winning them, so close to winning that game. But the team that I, w- I want to do is Sheffield United away. I know we beat them in the playoffs, but in the I league, want them. Premier League now. Yeah, we're in the Premier League now. So, John, if you're watching this, I'm calling for you, mate. Um, we always batter them these days. We always batter them these days. So, yeah, I think Sheffield United is a team that I want to come out of. All. Yeah, Sheffield United for me. Sheffield United. Well, yeah. that's listen. Guys, that's my 10 wrap-up. That's my 10 questions. Um, Legend does. Okay. An hour, yeah. hour and a bit. I hope you in the chat loved it. I loved it. Love talking to, to Swin, Des, Dor. Oh, people, uh, people love Kevin. People love Kevin. Hey, and just, listen. He's just been hiding. He's just, people in chat, he's just been hiding. Another one of my teams in the Premier League for next season. It just makes <laughs> me so happy, guys. Honestly, it <laughs> does. It does. It really makes me happy. So, cool. thank you guys for, for it's, coming it's, on. It's been a pleasure, everyone. And I think, Kevin, thank you for taking your time out for, um, as well. And as you know, Kevin, he does, he's in a hybrid squad as well, people. So, we can do a massive favour. He likes to talk about Arsenal. And as you know, we have got Arsenal first game of the season. Um, so, Kev, please don't go hiding. I mean, because we are the sports fans. And we, 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 we where, is it, think, where is it at? Uh, Emirates, is it Emirates Stadium? Emirates? It's, it's away the first game, yeah. Yeah, right. it's on TV. Listen, man, I'm sitting, like, you know what? I'm not going to lie. Before, oh, wait, door. Come on. I no, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm, and I've been there twice and we've lost 5 0 twice. So please, Forest Flash, just for me, a better performance. Because Arsenal are fantastic. Just lose <laughs> no. 
<laughs> but yeah, it's been a pleasure, Kev. Thank you very much for taking out your time as well, Kev. Before we go, Swin, are you, are you still got a hangover, Swin, from yesterday? Yesterday? Yes, Swin, for the, for the, for the um, Pujabi... Um... Oh, function, that was Saturday night. No, how was, how was it? Clever one. Yeah, I've still got a hangover from Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was, was brilliant. brilliant. How was it? How was it? it was brilliant, yeah, I had a great night. Brilliant night. Mm. Raised yeah, a bit for charity. So, yeah, it's really good. Good. As you yeah. know, uh, Swin's got a, a put Jarabi Forest. So if you do want to follow them, make sure you go on Twitter as well. I did put I put the link in. So if you do want to follow Pujabi, please do. Uh, great fan base as well. Um, and great people as well. Um, Des, we're going to PSV away, aren't we, Des? So are you going to PSV's win? I'm going to PSV. Yeah, I'm going to PSV. Kevin, have you ever, have you ever played there, Kevin, at PSV away? You played there? I've never played at PSV. Oh, okay. That's enough. Although Arsenal there last season, I, I didn't go. Oh, okay. Fair enough. In Fair the, enough. In the uh, Europa League. So, so people as well, me, Swin and Des, we're heading to the PSV away. So watch out for that. Um, people, it's been a great show. Kev, like I said, thank you for, for taking your time out for oh, on my channel. Absolutely legend. Des, please, I'm getting rid of Des. People in the chat, should I, should I give uh, Des a new contract? Yeah, contracts have had enough of them already. So, as well, people make sure everyone subscribes to Do Daily as well. Um, the link is in the description as well. Um, but, yeah, people, thank you, everyone, for taking out the time. We'll be back. Uh, let's say our first, what's the first, is it Notts County? I think, or PSB, or one of the teams, I think it's one of those. We'll be back, anyway, for transfer gossip with Jamie Martin as well. Um, but, yeah, I'll be back soon. But, like I say, thank you for everyone in the chat as well. Before we do go, please do hit the like button if you can. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you soon. Peace and love of the forest.